Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is our final video for this module, number 29, and we're looking at Indigenous Protocols and Smokebush in WA. So this is basically the continuation of the last video that we looked at specifically relating to protocols around Indigenous culture and knowledge. And the Smokebush is a specific example, a really good example of a case of where there is conflict between commercial interest and indigenous knowledge. So let's have a look at this in a little bit of detail. We want you to know what Smokebush is. We want you to be able to discuss the controversy associated with Smokebush and to be able to come to uh, an assessment, a personal decision around uh, how you feel about how this particular incident has played out. And of course, this is just one of many examples that we could have chosen, uh, but one which I think highlights the issues around intellectual property, um, preservation of Indigenous culture and heritage, uh, intellectual knowledge, uh, and also um, commercial benefit. So what is the smoke bush? Well, the smoke bush is a uh, plant that's, that's endemic in southwest Western Australia. It's a plant that's been used um, for thousands of years by the indigenous people of the region uh, because they knew about its um, medicinal capacity. But what has happened as a result uh, over the past probably about 60 years is that there has been a number of different scientific studies carried out to um, look at the specific medicinal properties associated with smoke bush and to um, identify specific uses for one of the key chemicals that's been extracted from smoke bush. As a result of that, we can see a little bit of an interplay between the commercial interests, the application of a specific chemical that is now known to uh, be effective in the treatment of AIDS, uh, and a patent which was granted, um, initially rights were granted to a US uh, cancer institute. They Once they isolated the chemical, they then granted the patent to uh, for exclusive worldwide use to a Victorian pharmaceutical company. And now there are uh, implications for the indigenous population that use this plant to continue to use it in the way that they always have. So who owns the knowledge? When these sorts of situations arise um, and patents are or exclusive rights are sought and granted to commercial enterprises, what happens to uh, all that Indigenous knowledge? And in fact, how do we recognise it? To give you a little bit of an overview, what we're specifically talking about is uh, the smoke bush plant, AMRAD, which is the uh, Victorian pharmaceutical company that were granted the patent, and Conocuravone, which is the specific chemical that's been extracted now we can go back, I don't know how long we go back for the traditional use of smoke bush uh, in healing, but certainly part of indigenous heritage and culture and part of that internet intellectual knowledge that we were talking about in the last video. In the 1960s, the Western Australian government granted a license to the US Cancer Institute to access smoke bush and determine if it had any specific properties that they could identify and use. The findings then were inconclusive, but the plant was kept in storage. Uh, and then in the 1980s, there was an outbreak of AIDS. We subsequently found that AIDS is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV. And a lot of testing happened around that because we didn't have any uh, treatments for AIDS patients. So 7,000 plants from around the world were tested um, and only four of those plants were found to contain this very important chemical ingredient, conocuravone. And that specific chemical is the one that destroys HIV in low concentrations. So now we've linked a specific chemical from a specific natural source, the smoke bush, to a treatment for a particular um, virus, the disease AIDS. Now, what the U.S. Um, Cancer Institute did was they granted, a, they sought a, and were granted a patent for this particular um, 
chemical compound, and they awarded the patent to a Victorian company, AMRAD. AMRAD then had exclusivity. They were able to use the plant to extract this particular chemical and to um, uh, amplify it for commercial purposes. All of this was done uh, with two very important things that were happening at the same time. The first was that there was no acknowledgement of Indigenous knowledge of this plant, no understanding of the historical cultural uses and the fact that this plant was already well known well before um, any of the scientists from these institutes got involved to extract the specific compound um, from the plant. So Indigenous knowledge was general. This particular plant has these particular properties, but it wasn't specific. It didn't understand um, the uh, specific chemical that was associated with it. But after that happened, there's been no acknowledgement, no financial recompense out of the money that's been made commercially for this particular drug. Um, no uh, even... Um, um, no respect paid, no um, write-up anywhere that identified that the knowledge actually came from the Indigenous community initially um, prior to it then being uh, extracted and concentrated by um, scientists elsewhere. The current legislation disregards the potential intellectual property rights that Indigenous people in WA have in flora on their lands. Furthermore, multinational drug companies could be sold exclusive rights to entire species of flora, preventing anyone from using these species for any other purpose without the consent of the companies. So this is what is legislation. And what it means is that um, many of those indigenous communities that have been using these plants for, for thousands of years, potentially, now needed to apply to a specific a pharmaceutical company to continue to access the same plants. What we want you to do is we want you to look at this in a little bit more detail. When issues come down to um, history, heritage and culture, they can often um, inspire a great deal of emotion. It's important as scientists that we gather the information and that we understand exactly all of the processes that have been involved here but we also recognise the rights of intellectuals, of individuals uh, and intellectual property. One of the things that can be challenging when we look at a lot of Indigenous communities is that the um, record of knowledge was not uh, recorded in a written form, but was passed down orally from generation to generation. And one of the reasons for this was that it wasn't assumed that this knowledge was going to have some sort of commercial benefit but that it was going to benefit all members of the community. Terry Jenke, in her article From Smokebush to Spinifex Towards Recognition of Indigenous Knowledge in the Commercialization of Plants, in a 2018 article has updated a lot of the um, controversy associated with Smokebush, um, the extraction of Conocuravone and the treatment of AIDS, as well as a number of other examples which she looks at. What we want you to do in class is to take this one step further, to actually have a look at the specifics around the controversy. I've just presented it to you now and to, to come up with some conclusions yourself about what you feel um, is the right and correct response to not just the, the issues associated with smoke bush, but issues more widely around Indigenous knowledge and practice. So we'll save that for class. Thanks for watching.